Hi, it's Talia. I'm super grateful to Framework for sending me their 13-inch Intel laptop DIY kit to try out. Truth be told, despite all the keyboards and softwares I've developed, I'm no computer person, so the knowledge I have about machine innards is close to average. So, I developed three fun challenges to user test Framework to the extreme. Assemble it without looking at the manual, design and 3D print my own custom module, and finally, see if I can reverse years of MacBook familiarity and go about a typical day in my college life using Framework as my main device. Huge disclaimer! As I mentioned, I am not at all experienced with judging consumer electronics, so if you want to see a true tech review of the Framework laptop, I do recommend all these other channels. However, it is also for this exact reason that I can provide a truly unique perspective and point out good and bad things that others would never think twice about. That being said, I preemptively apologize to Framework and CEO Narav Patel for all the passive roasting and light humor initiated by my own faults, when I do understand that this revolutionary innovation was incredibly well designed. For a moderately seasoned computer wrangler seeking an easily interchangeable and self-repairable product, I can truly admit lifetime guarantee. So I started off on a not so great start, struggled a bit to get the main box open. But the majestic arrangement of the parts inside blessed my OCD as I carefully pulled out each puzzle piece. The tightly stacked layout seems to mimic the smooth flow of Apple products packaging. Designing the unboxing process to be satisfying and user-friendly is a sure way to make a lasting good first impression. I thought I'd be able to get the mainframe out from opening one side, but I ended up having to go through the trouble of peeling away all four sides. There we go. Not that I'm the one complaining, but even a few extra seconds of work will feel like hours for an impatient customer. Wow. <laughs> as someone who's never really looked inside computers or has really paid attention to a device's specific processing unit, storage, battery, etc., I can't really give any opinion on Framework's choice of parts. However, I do appreciate the little QR codes located on each component. I really like how easy it is to scan each QR code and bring up the page on the exact replacement guide for that specific part. Also, I'm loving how these replacement guides are so well documented, complete with edited videos for every step. I was also curious about the modern appeal of the graphics library used, and a bit of investigation took me to a place called Chakra UI. I'm familiar with Mantine and Tailwind, so it's always cool to learn about other available resources. Now, this paper. It reminds me of the wax parchment paper I used for baking cookies. Is it the same material? I've got no idea, but positive points for taking advantage of the unique translucency. While I was figuring out how to correctly install the hardware, I was thinking that the dangling ribbon cable, albeit paper thin and compact, was rather fragile and would definitely be prone to snapping if not careful. Nevertheless, the actual connection was fairly simple, given that the user, myself, has seen and used a keyboard before, and thus is knowledge with how a keyboard should be oriented and the fact that there's only one simple connection to make. Now I think, since I can see a gap between the keyboard and bottom casing, I should look for a screwdriver for these small screws. And sure enough, this graphically labeled box presented the exact tool I needed for the job. Next up, I unpacked the bezel. Bezel? which I guess is just a fancy name for that frame that attaches, ooh, magnetically, around the display. But in order to hook the case in between the gutter, the laptop had to make an 180 degree bend, something that my current MacBook couldn't possibly achieve. After the green snapped into place, which by the way, I'm wondering why anyone would want to open their computer in the morning and see a lawn this vibrant, really making me question the overly expressive color options here, but I digress. I moved on to the small crate of what were labeled as expansion cards, which were a variety of USB, HDMI, Ethernet, the kinds of connections you might expect to be useful for power, data transfer, and that kind of stuff. I like how easy it is to open each little box and slide in the adapters in any of the four positions with a satisfying click. Also, I noticed that one of the boxes fashioned a craft tape closure rather than the usual pull tab which makes me thankful that Framework is a company that values recycling parts and packaging without losing the overall feel of newness. Okay, so I think I'm done? These 8GB cards and game drive must be replacements just in case, since Mr. Patel doesn't know if I'm into gaming or not, so I guess I'll try plugging in the power cable and turning on the laptop. Yeah, nope, the laptop would not turn on, but I'm still not giving in and looking at the instruction manual, so first I'll do a quick research to figure out what these non-framework labeled components are supposed to be. Memory and storage. 
Oh wow, were those labels with QR codes I saw earlier shouting out what was missing there as opposed to describing the existing element? At least an idiot like me can figure out how the back of the screwdriver can be used like a Lego separator tool and wedge open the lid. Plus, there's this cute little handle to easily release the keyboard. These parts aren't specifically labeled with storage or memory, but given the 1 versus 2 empty slots, I think I can easily deduce which goes where. After popping the cards in, I tried turning on the laptop again. The default boot device missing or boot failed. I was sure all the hardware components were in their designated positions, so I braved the issue, stared at the flashing red LED, and decided I was too lazy to open up the interior a third time. So I bet everything on it being a software problem and booked it to the Krieger computer lab. Apparently, a Windows PC is required for putting Windows on another computer, so what can I do? Absolutely nothing, because it looks like the school doesn't want us installing 11 glass panes. Plan B, I still have access to the windowless basement research lab with Windows that I formerly worked at, and secretly use the machine for media creation. Whoops, well here's me a week later trying it again. Success! It's my first time setting up a Windows operating system, so I'm honestly confused. Is what I'm doing here considered illegal, or was I supposed to purchase a product key? At first, I couldn't connect to Wi-Fi at all, so I had to wait for Ethernet. I really like the concept and execution of these interchangeable ports, but the securement is honestly a bit too tight for my chipping nails. Eventually, the setup went through, and now I can successfully say I've built a working computer! Truly, Framework made it too easy. The sleek, minute-to-make design completely outclasses the ancient, high-effort way to assemble parts for a custom PC. Even all future Aquarium, Galaxy, and Claw Machine builds can expect a faster and cheaper output by utilizing the time and cost saving modular technique that framework performs so perfectly. Modularity means individual parts can be replaced, repaired, and recycled while conserving expensive components that still work just fine. And it opens the floor to a wide community of engineers and hobbyists who can easily adapt creative new elements to fit in with the existing framework. And that's exactly my plan. I'd love to stick some electronics into a compact module, but I think it's best to start simple with a purely decorative element. I started by using my out-of-battery caliper to measure and CAD the exact dimensions of one of the expansion cards. This should allow the 3D printed module to slide neatly into the computer, but for what should actually be the decoration, well... The final challenge, can I survive a busy day using the framework laptop instead of what I'm normally used to? Well, not even a few minutes in and I've already been unable to use the glitchy trackpad. Since I didn't pay to activate Windows properly, I'd attribute the inability to two-finger scroll to the associated lack of customization, however, it was still difficult to click and interact normally. So I borrowed a mouse, packed both devices, and committed to a day of not being a homebody. In class, the tiny desks don't allow much room for a mouse to scuttle around, and the loud clicks are sure to disturb the peaceful learning environment. But the computer itself works brilliantly, feels great to type on, and is full-time student-approved lightweight. Something I immediately noticed when assembling the bezel was these unique physical switches for toggling the camera and mic. It was exciting to see the simple FBI spy cover implemented more technically. Given the daily frequency of virtual meetings I take, I of course had to download Zoom to test it out, and it was ultimately a decent call quality. A second package from Framework arrived, and to my joy, it's a tote bag! I love tote bags, and this sturdy canvas shouts eco-friendly from inside and out. Building a Framework laptop is a lot like baking chocolate chip cookies. Given a well-tested recipe for success, anyone can DIY and take pride in something they can take home and enjoy with a smile.